All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another FFT AI battle. On top, we have Super Divan's uh, Triple Monster team. And then on bottom, we have uh, Fnatic's team from the tournament. So we got this Behemoth, this King Behemoth, this Dark Behemoth, and this uh, Bard called Squishy Bait. Yep. And now for uh, Fnatic's team, we got Actual Monk the Monk, North Star Monk the Wizard, Temple Monk the Priest, in alt mid monk the archer so um this wizard uh she has frog i believe right let me re let me remember yeah frog and death okay so if she's in melee range there's a chance she's gonna go for a punch art or i should say she's gonna go for secret fist in the monk skill set because secret fist is uh skills off of ma I don't think it's it, it's boosted by magic attack up, but your MA value overall. With 19 in MA, she'll have a very high chance of inflicting a death sentence onto any of these behemoths. I mean, she's probably going to get one-shotted. Um, uh, so I just realized right off the bat, the Bard being a Libra, bad compat with everybody on this team. So the damage output from this uh, Harp is going to do very little. Everyone else is neutral compat, though. So it's a definitely a possibility this behemoth will one-shot the wizard, but we'll see. All right, so uh, the map we're going to be going to is... Let's go to uh, Checkerboard Land 1. This is an incredibly small map. Uh, there might be some melee damage within literally the first turns of these units. Uh, if I wanted to, you know, obviously I could readjust the map and have, like, the units sit in one corner and then, like, have the units sit in the other corner and therefore the map size would be different. Um, when I usually refer to map size, I'm referring to like the distance between unit units have between each other. Oh shit! Instant Giga Flare. Oh my god. Well, at least she's awake. So that's that's a little bit fortunate. Um, no, I'm a guess because it'll do zero damage. Uh, double damage, 252 collectively. Not bad. Uh, hit and run with the death proc. Nice. That's a very smart of her. Um, looks like a protect. Yep, yep. Because of the damage he incurred, makes a little sense. Priest is gonna just kind of heal him up for <laughs> something. You know, sixty is better than nothing. MP switch. Yes, yes. So he lives, and I. Oh, uh oh, yeah. He got gangbang. He got railed on both sides. Oh, that's too bad. All right, death under the king behemoth, which is something. Um, is she go for charm. No, she doesn't have charm. She's got item. I forgot. Um, but she will serve up a shot. 71% frog. Uh, there's going to be a revival here. 100% because of the good compatibility and good faith. 47% raise too. So there is revival on both of these teams. Nice frog. All right. Hell yeah. All right. 150. Wow, she can survive three shots. And remember, she's got a Dracula mantle. So that evasion is going to come into play. That bard. Um, that bard's going to want to revive the... The bard's going to want to... What I'm trying to say, the bard is going to want to get rid of that uh, frog proc as soon as possible. Um, another death proc, nice. Any as soon as, or is it just, just damage? All right, that's kind of unfortunate. I'm not sure if that archer is going to get mid charged by the behemoth. Nope, and he, he body blocks with protect. Nice, nice. All right, well, this is kind of working out in. Uh, this is kind of working out in uh, Finax's favor because they're putting a large amount of a. Uh, of an investment into this uh, this archer, and with MP switch move MP up, they're just going to be uh, uh, dumping turns into him. And with the way the maps are aligned right now, you want the casters to just stay far as far away as possible, which is kind of what they're doing up until that um, priest did a a reasonable heal. You know, you don't want the ranged damage dealers to be up in front. Huh, nice uh, elevation right there. That's kind of cool with the the harps. Hurricane for Respectable damage. I mean, 90-something, but as you can see, their PA save, so she's going to get stronger, which is going to make uh, her, like, uh, wave fists a lot harder. They're going to hit harder. Um, and that Dark Behemoth, uh, like I mentioned before, the, uh, the, the, the Bard here has um, a kind of poor prioritization right now for these units. All right, so the archer is down, but again, that, that Asuna needs to come into play. If this bard goes down, it is over for Super Divan. Um, this is look, looking like a little bit of a struggle. Sunken State is kind of interesting, because, yeah, I can still see him. Um, yeah, any chakras to keep him healed? Oh, he just... That's right. 
The priest has got chakra. Okay. I forgot that they don't have all their skill sets mastered. Yeah, again, if that bard goes down, it's basically over, and he's not he he's gotta go for revival here. Very high chances of death sentence, so we will see him be uh taking be taken out. And uh he's got two more chances left before that uh unit's gonna get frogged. Or the the Dark Behemoth is just gonna be an in frog indefinitely. because uh, there's no um status ref uh healing outside of this uh bard. The bard is the focal point for uh their survivability. Bladegrass does uh, trigger this time. Makes sense given uh, the frontal evasion of the wizard on top of her base evasion. So. Three. Oh, wow. A little bit of friendly fire. That's unfortunate. I don't think that was the best course of action. Final turn for this bard. All right. Well, at least he's wisely going for a revival right here. And I kind of like this distribution of the abilities right here. Because with um, the priest having chakra, if he's out of range physically, he can use... Um, he can use re-raise as a, as a defensive mechanism. But the way this looks right now, this is going to be going to uh, Fnatic. It just looks like it because, uh, again, they can't do anything here. Um, the ranged units are just kind of, you know, hanging back, doing whatever. Uh, unfortunately, no Giga Flare there. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't go for a Giga Flare, that behemoth. Maybe he didn't want to do friendly fire and kill off his unit. I couldn't say. But, yeah, this is now a permanent... Uh, 2v4 or permanent 3v4 that King Behemoth is doing a fair amount of damage but uh, um, I, I feel like he's going to get healed up too much and yeah he just died there so the the priest can uh, easily go for revival too but in addition to revival um, go for a simple raise spell raise 2 I should say and the, and the monk can heal for a very high amount of HP 150 plus that 41 being 190, that's like more than the King Behemoth himself. So, I mean, the way we're looking at it right now, yeah, permanent 2v4, and it's up to the Behemoth to one shot. And he does not die to death, unfortunately. But um, the way I'm looking at it right now is uh, these Behemoths weren't able to get into the range of the spellcasters, primarily the wizard, the wizard and the priest. The priest, you know, being a reviver, being a reviver is very important, and she wasn't able to do anything there. So. <clears throat> This uh, will definitely be uh, different on a large map, though, because they're going to be able, they're not going to be able to use the at you know the advantage of this uh, elevation of the map, you know, to gain ground basically. You know, with uh, this high elevation, like the the behemoths are not able to get down there, and now you have a frog doing this thing. She just put down, and you saw that it was only ninety nine damage. It has to be compat. Ooh, a staff whack, nice. That's how you kill frogs, you beat them over it. Yes, the bard does have a Suna. We can uh, double check that too, because he used it last round. He should have a Suna. He used it last round. Yeah, he used it. Um, he didn't prioritize it for some reason, VCOT. I couldn't tell you why, definitively. Um, maybe he just felt like doing damage was more important or something, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. And now, yeah, it's a permanent 4v1. We're just waiting for the frog to be uh, put down. Um, yeah, so the way this is going right now, um, I don't know. I want to see kind of a bit of a tiebreaker, see some action going on. A frog is sticking his, was a blue tongue out? Interesting. All right, so he's been put down. All right, let's go to our uh, large map then, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's yeah, take a look. And, you know, with uh, a map, a large map that doesn't have a lot of uh, height discrepancy, uh, they're not going to be able to take advantage of that, I believe. Um Let's go to, uh, let's go to, mm, I'm trying to think. Let's go to, I've, I'm just trying to pick a large map we haven't done in a long time. I think Mandalia Plains hasn't been on the chopping block for some time. You know, you know it's hard to keep track of exactly what maps you've done every single time outside of going by uh, short-term memory. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. And I haven't really looked at the distribution of map sizes. And again, to clarify from from before, since we're, we have some time for these teams to get in uh, range with one another, um, when I refer to map size, map size, I shouldn't say that. Just to be more specific, it's about positioning of the units, how close or how far away they are, and that you know the map can always dictate that, right? Like if I had these two units in the dead center of the map, it would be considered smaller, large, close encounters. So. 
Um, those are the variables you have to consider, right? It's been about two turns for everybody. They haven't done any action yet. It looked like uh, Cheersung had three out of four units there, 61%. She can bait herself with Playgrass, but if it doesn't connect, it'll be for nothing. Let's see if she lives. Nope, and she took critical damage for 400, and even though the thing said 200 damage. Oh, that is unfortunate. So, in a complete 180, it looks like, uh, wow, 378 collective damage. Pretty good right there into all those uh, behemoths. Um, but the bar is not going to be so fortunate uh, once these behemoths get their turns in. Um, protect, not bad. Double panel. Another mid-charge. And uh, this is what I was referring to earlier at the beginning of the... Uh, what well, I was referring to in the other round with these units, and unfortunately, these um, the ranged units getting into uh, melee action, it was going to spell trouble. You know, you want the priest and the wizard to conventionally stay in the back line. And unfortunately, they didn't really do that. All right, so another two fifty. No, no, actually protecting the behemoth, but still over two. Look like it was close to two hundred damage. Uh, no PA save, but it doesn't really matter. Or I should say A save specifically. Um, but no, uh, the way this is looking now, this is a, the complete opposite, and this is what I was anticipating would occur. Um, remember, the Giga Flares could definitely occur. And if the AI sees Giga Flare does less damage, for instance, um, compared to uh, a simple stab up, uh, the Behemoth might uh, move a couple panels back and get a double shot on both, uh, both of them. Yep, I was correct. Uh, unfortunately, she does not die, but um, she's probably going to get speared to death here. The mantle did not save her this time. The Dracula mantle's 28% evasion it provided. Um, so looking at this, uh, yeah, complete 180. The archer does have, uh, no, the archer does not have revive. Um, he does not have that skill learned. I believe he's just got uh, earth slash learned. Let's let's just double check. Not that it really matters. This is going to field trip class, right? I'm pretty sure he's at only, oh, I can't check. I don't think he's got revive, but even if he did, it wouldn't matter in this scenario. He's uh, hanging way too far back and he can't one shot these units would just move MP, MP switch, move MP up. They're eventually going to surround him. Uh, in the position he's in right now, it's kind of wise because um, the King Behemoth, oh, never mind. I thought they didn't have enough range to spear him from both shots or from both sides, but they did. Um, yeah, so we are going to be going to a tiebreaker, absolutely. In just a moment. All right, well, I, I thought uh, there was a little bit more to it, but no, that was pretty uh, quick. Goddamn. All right. There's another map I was thinking of, a medium map that I wanted to go to. Oh, yeah, I talked about it um, the previous match. It was, uh, what was it called? It was uh, the North, right? Let me see if we can find the fucking thing. North Wall of Bethlehem Garrison. So that text edit has been made. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so again, the main thing about this map is that there's a little there's a little stairway, which is the focal point for where both teams are gonna start clashing. Um, if the bar if the archer is smart, he'll take the high ground, he'll just be plucking arrows, but uh, he's gotta uh, walk up there first. He, he might be able to uh, lob an arrow from that uh, from over the wall even without the height, but I could be wrong because it is a long bow. But usually you're aiming downwards. You're not aiming super high up. So uh, the way it is right now, yeah, the, the pathway is getting a little bit blocked. The King Behemoth, all the Behemoths are just kind of storming in. Archer is uh, taking a little bit of the high ground, but he's uh, a little too close in my opinion. I can't see his position. Yeah. So Frog, 70%. Uh, she's charging and running away very smart with the AI to do that. Um, I don't know if the charge is going to connect. It does for okay damage, 144, not the, not the highest thrill, but it's a weak bow too, wind slash bow, very low uh, weapon power, I believe. And there's the frog from beforehand. Uh, MP switch saved his life, and I just wanted to check out of curiosity. I th isn't it like eight weapon power? Yeah, yeah. If it was like 12 weapon power, it'd be a lot more respectable, but unfortunately that's not the case. The archer should be using MP switch, yep. It's kind of nice he's keeping his back to the wall because that way um, only one unit can hit him at a time. Um, another death? Oh no, yeah, that is a death proc. Um, I'm hoping that Bard is smart enough to use Asuna. If he isn't, it's going to be very hard um, with the units unintentionally kind of backing themselves in the corner. 
He could still die, don't get me wrong, if MP switch doesn't connect like there, but uh I believe the monk has uh, revive uh Phoenix down. So she should be able to use Phoenix down from all the way down there. It's a little cool nuance, but with Phoenix down, um I just want to demonstrate it real quick. Let's see if I can really fast. Normally in Phoenix Town, it's independent of height. So like right here, if somebody died on this panel, someone could use a Phoenix Town from all the way down here, revive someone and vice versa. It's a little, it's a weird thing. We, we should be seeing it here, right? If she's got a Phoenix Town. Yeah, see? It's a little weird how those little subtleties can make a difference, you know, especially in a, uh, a PVE playthrough, a conventional, you know, a playthrough of the game, not the AI mods. It's a little cool thing. Hurricane to take him out. No, it misses too. Unfortunate. And still no revive. Still no as soon as on that behemoth. Thankfully, it's the lowest hero. Wow, we got two frogs now. Oh shit! I want to see some. All right, here comes the king behemoth. Uh, fortunately, blade gas triggers. Oof. Um, low odds. We got multicolored frogs here, though, baby. Oof. <laughs> this bard's got to use Asuna. He's got to do it. Oh, actually, you know what? With MP switch triggering, he's losing his mana, so he needs to get enough mana to be able to cure them. And with him being targeted, it's going to be kind of difficult for the revival. 78% fisted right up the butt, that frog. Oof. Um, yeah, again, with all with MP switch being his reaction ability, I think auto potion would have been, would have been a better option. But I understand why, too. It's the defensive purpose of, you know, a unit having low stats. You can survive a death a death blow. But in this particular matchup, he doesn't have enough mana. Um, he is able to heal up, don't get me wrong. But uh, this wizard, with all of her evasion, she might even just go for a death sentence on this guy, right? And it's got to be bad compat, because that's 53%. And uh, I know it's got much higher odds. Any uh, mid charges? Yes. Uh, MP switch, though, keeps him alive. Nice, nice. Hmm. Not bad. Okay, okay. Uh, should be an next potion right here. Yeah. So the way this is playing out, this should be going into uh, uh, Fanatic's favor. Because, um, because uh, the King Behemoth can only do so much. And with, um, and with the Archer just kind of being the bait, like... Like another secret fist? Yes, and it does connect. So if this um, Bard's gonna have enough MP, if he doesn't have enough MP, if he doesn't have enough MP, he can't cast spells. Uh, that's gotta be bad or worse compared. I'm just curious. I just want to take a look, right? So it's Cancer, and that's Capricorn, right? No, okay. Okay, so that's a minimum. It's neutral compared and minimum faith. Okay. So I, I should say the Archer has minimum faith, forty or close to actually. Excuse me. I'm um, almost guest. That's the one thing that they have going for them is that the AOE from Alma Guest, so if he gets poked out enough, he could just uh start spraying Alma Guest damage to do AoE. That's the only way I could see him coming back from this. Now there is an Angel Song, so there's a potential for a revive. A revive spell. Or a Suna. Most likely we'll see a revive from the Bard if he's in range. Another Alma Guest, nice. And a double kill right there. Oh, that is so bad. And why? And I was just talking about before. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Um, a bit big turnaround there with all my guests. So that uh, Dark Behemoth is doing his thing very wisely, indeed. Um, yeah, uh, I just don't know how this is gonna go though. I believe if the well, actually, even if the priest does run out of MP, the, MP, the priest has chakra, so. The priest will be able to heal up his own MP bar back down. Uh, looks like a raise to 400 HP under the monk. Interesting. Now with that death sense applying, um, the king, the king behemoth's going to have to get revived here. Um, the question is if the bard's going to be able to get a turn off. Um, any death sentences? Yes, and it hits on the bard too, so he is going down, guaranteed. In two more actions, he has to revive this uh, dark behemoth, and they. They're running the, the the time bomb is ticking. It's eventually going to be over. But so again, when the bar when the when the bar's down, there's no more uh, Alma guests. Yep, nice. Yes, and it does kill her. But the bar does one more turn to make something happen. The only other thing I could see him doing is going for uh, hopefully an Asuna and not these just useless frogs that have done nothing, haven't been able to do anything. 
Any as soon as no. What is he going for? I think he's going for protect. Uh, I'm pretty sure the bard is in range to use Asuna. Let me just see, because I think. Oh wait, final my guest. It does not take the. It does not take her out. Let me see something. I'm just curious. I think. I think the bard was in range to hit at least one person with Asuna. I don't know why he didn't go for it, but that's what I would have done. I would have tried to revive the behemoths as quickly as possible. He might have been arranged to heal both of them. And so it would have been just the monsters again. Reray is doing its thing. Um, all my guests again. Wow. All right, on the tank as well. Um, no revival. Yeah, there's only revival left. Oh, wow. Okay. There's only revival left on uh, the priest. But... And wow, even that missed. So if that priest goes down, uh, there could be... <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a comeback of the frogs. Yep, yep. Oh, 65%. It does not trigger. That's a little unfortunate. A death rock. A little overkill, but... You know, at least it solidifies a death, which is what matters. <clears throat> yeah, so the way this is going right now, this is... Uh, going to be going back into... Um, yeah, this is going to be going to uh, uh, Fnatic for sure. Um, we're just kind of waiting for them to sink their time in. Are we going to see a death onto this unit by a frog? Are we going to see a death onto the wizard? Because I, I really... I'm curious to see that. Yes! We got a crit shot, baby! Oh my god, he poked her right up the butt. He licked her and she hated it. Oh, we actually saw a kill shot <laughs> from a frog. Fuck yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe we actually saw that, but... Even so, with all the shenanigans aside, eventually just... And somehow a frog's able to dodge that. Then again, they are small, so... Trying to shoot an, a frog at an arrow is probably not the easiest thing. Um, neither is fisting them, but it doesn't matter. This this runs over. Uh, Archer's got the high ground, as Obi-Wan Kenobi would say to Anakin in their final fight. Uh, during the... During the... Republic with the Emperor and all that. <laughs> I have the high ground. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, well. Any deaths? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah so there is a death proc. We're going to find if it hits or not. Um, they're probably just running away because the death blow is going into play right now. But yeah, this is going to uh, Fnatic. So... All right. Well, congratulations, Fnatic. You take this uh, tiebreaker. Unfortunately for you, uh, Super Divan, um, uh, the bar just kind of made some bad decisions and really didn't use Asuna as much as I thought he should have. But uh, that's the AI for you. Even with the joke team, it was kind of interesting seeing that little um, momentum shift back and forth constantly, even if they're not presumably top tiers or whatever. It was still pretty fun. So, yeah. All right. Well, with that said, I will see you guys for... Um, uh, the next match, uh, whether that's uh, here on YouTube in the next video or the next one on this memory card for the stream. So, yeah, remember to like, comment, and subscribe both on Twitch and here on YouTube. So, yeah, take care until then.